thank again you all for this, I think, very interesting uh, sharing of ideas and themes. You have raised many, many things here. I would say from language and the power of language, the power to heal, the power to, uh, to rediscover oneself, the limits of reality, the limits of reality and dream and fantasy, the limits of borders between countries, the issue of identity, which is uh, around all these uh, other themes, the stereotypes, and uh, the stereotypes of what is to be a Latin America or a Latino in the United States, or what is to be a Latin American for a non-Latin American, what is the Latin American literature, what is the kind of thing we should write or should not write, what kind of connections are also throughout or through these borders between even people of the, who write, writers who write in English or in Spanish, but who have some cultural historical link among them because they are Latin Americans or uh, of Latin American heritage in the United States. And um, I invite you all, of course, uh, you see there is a microphone there, you can see the red light teeming there. Uh, I know people are sometimes uh, need to warm up. So we, we'll start talking here and just feel free to line up there, to line behind the microphones and when you wish we can, we can have an older conversation with the writers here. But Maria, precisely, you, you point out something, I think it's a good point where we can start up. Uh, you said Latin Americans in the United States in general we have a space, I'm talking about writers and artists. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the country, uh, the society open uh, as uh, and space, but at the same time there is a restriction like uh, entwined or entwined with that, which doesn't come from the outside necessarily, but sometimes from, from ourselves, uh, that pushes us into a sort of, um, uh, well, you use the word get a vacation. Right, and it's sort of isolation and seclusion was the first word. And mm -hmm. um, I wonder, for instance, Roberto, who is also a long time resident here, how you react with, to Maria's <coughs> observation? Well, um, I, I would like not to go directly to this question. I would like to, to mention some other factors which play a role in my experience. Um, uh, my experience, no, normally when I talk to people um, from Latin America here, uh, who have been living here for a long time, their experience is um, just one experience with our country of origin, and then the second one with the United States. And so they are like living in a bridge between both countries. Um, for me, this is, has been a, a new problem to understand because in, in my case, I have uh, lived in six different countries for a long time, and since the year 2000, I'm living here in, in the United States. But I lived for many years, 15 years in Germany, uh, th three of them in East Germany. Uh, then uh, in, I went to West Germany, where I you know, worked as a journalist. Before that, in the 70s, I lived in Cuba, and before coming to the United States, I lived in Sweden. So I have different nostalgias. I have, I miss not only the my country of origin, but also the 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 other countries where I have lived. So this is um, a more dynamic and plural experience in terms of um, remembering and uh, projecting yourself and trying to build your own identity. But in all these countries, I have had the, f the following experience, especially in the um, countries of the North. Um, my novels have been translated into nine languages, but something is very interesting. I have, for example, a novel which, uh, the title of that novel is uh, uh, Los Amantes de Stockholm, Lovers of Stockholm, and although Different countries have been very interested in that novel. Swedish publishers are not. I have another novel called The German from Atacama, and although it has been published in different countries in Europe, not in Germany. And the question is the following. What is happening there that publishers from some countries reject books which try to map or depict the reality from that country, 
I, I know this is a, a dangerous concept to talk about a novel is depicting, a, but referring at least to that country. Uh, when this novel has been written by a person from another culture. And I see here a, a very long uh, history of um, telling the story and telling history just from one point of view. As a Latin American, you, you, you know that, and through cinema and also through novels and through journalism, very clear, you are almost, in Latin America, um, an object of depiction, an object of description. And the narrative voice is always, several times, uh, set in the, in, in the north. But through the last changes, especially in immigration and through exile, uh, this logic has started to change. And it has brought a lot of writers and journalists, intellectuals from Latin America to Europe or the United States. And they start to write about those countries and writing from the margins of those countries, changing for the first time this point of view. And there I see the first reaction in terms of censoring, rejecting that, in not accepting that. And I see this wish or rejection against being depicted by others. And uh, I see that in, in, in European countries, I see that here. And I think that's related all this, at the same time with what uh, Maria said in terms of being secluded and being uh, turned into an exotic subject. It, one, one question, Roberto, uh, talking about otherness and exotic uh, countries. Um, China is not an exotic country, but it's quite, you know, and understandable for many of us. It's a very, you know, or would be the, the definition for exotic for many of us uh, who grew up reading Los Etodo in, in some place in Buenos Aires. And, and it was really very uh, surprising to me. I was astonished to know that your novel was about to be published in Mandarin. So you're just about to get, you know, the possibility of being read by millions and millions of people. I mean, how is that a Chilean writer? What is in, in the writing uh, of a Chilean author that might be interesting for a Chinese writer, a uh, Chinese reader? This is a very difficult question. Huh? I, uh, in fact, this is my second novel in, in Mandarin. So uh, you're successful. I mean, they like it. They, they want more. <laughs> want more, right. But this is, I have to be very frank, I don't know, and I, I, I would like to, to, to get to know more about which are the reasons why uh, Chinese publishing houses react in a so a positive way towards my novels. But most interesting than that is to say at the same time that it's for a Latin American writer, in my case, for example, easier now, it's very clear, to be published in China than in other Latin American countries. This is, well, and then we can um, start to talk. This is another subject well, we, we, we should- There's certainly a balkanization.